This model from WSI is a limited edition and just for a change it comes in a specially branded box. And that's because this model is in the colours of Martins on Van Oerd, which is a Dutch civil engineering company. Inside the outer sleeve, however, the box is standard WSI, with the parts held in a tray between plastic formers. This truck has a number of component parts, so we'll start by putting those together. And firstly, we'll attach the gooseneck to the interdolly, and then hook up the gooseneck on the big MAN 10x4 tractor. You can adjust the height of the interdolly wheels to get them properly grounded if you want, or you could have them raised out of service. Next, we grab a handful of flatbed and pin it to the rear module. The parts are engineered well enough so the pin goes in reasonably easily. And then we can hook the front of the deck into the interdolly. So that's it, basically assembled in full configuration, but there's some detailing to sort out. There are cables and hoses which run from the gooseneck, so you need to stuff those in somehow. And there's more that run from the interdolly, and for those, there's a hole in the deck to put them into. Then we can add some warning signs, and these fit into the gooseneck. And moving to the back, there's a plate which fits into the end of the trough. And here we see giant salami fingers having to fiddle with it. We had the warning signs at the front, so here are some to fit to the back. The MAN TGX is a big old boy and it's a 10x4, and the tyres on the rear driven axles have a different tread pattern. The chassis detailing is very good and the cab looks really good too. The graphics are very sharp and attractive, and there's a realistic number plate. Behind the cab there's a plastic equipment tower with coiled lines, and the multiple axles certainly make for a tough looking truck. Looking at the underneath of the gooseneck and the dollies, they are well made metal parts. And the level of detailing is very good, including the control consoles on the side of the gooseneck. The interdolly is also very well finished, with plenty of small graphics. And the deck has got realistic looking timbers, made in plastic. The wheels on the modules have highlighted hubs, and the Notobomb logo is printed on the edge and on the mud flaps. A particularly nice detail is the highlighted bolt heads on the access plates. Once again we find ourselves out on the test track, and the big MAN rolls along well enough in a straight line. Let's take an ant's eye view of the underneath, and all of the wheels spin easily enough with the rear ones mounted on common axles. There is linked steering on axles 1, 2 and 3, but the range of movement is very small. However, you can set it a little bit, and as we always say, something is better than nothing. On this model, the tilting cab works well and it poses in a tilted position, and there's a detailed engine marked MAN that's worth a look. Another feature on the tractor is that you can adjust the position of the fifth wheel longitudinally. Most of the functionality, however, is reserved for the trailer. The angle of the gooseneck is adjustable and the hydraulic rams that control it are quite stiff. And moving on to the modules, we'll start with the interdolly, which speeds along quite nicely. The wheel sets don't have sprung suspension, but you can adjust them for height. And the interdolly does have linked steering, which is parallel, so it can move along in a crab like fashion. The rear module also rolls along very well, and unlike the interdolly, each of the wheel sets has independently sprung suspension. There is also linked steering, which is proportional, meaning that the rear wheels turn more than those at the front. So, with the steering set, it's able to trace a nice curve. There are a lot of wheels on the overall truck, but once it's fully assembled and with a load on, then it does a good job with each of the wheels being grounded, so that they do roll along. Another bit of functionality is the extendable deck, and that opens up to significantly extend the length of the model. If we check the ground clearances, then the tyres are grounded, and the deck remains clear of the ground, at least when it's unloaded. Another configuration possibility is to have it without the interdolly. And to have that, the deck just hooks into the gooseneck. To get the angles right though, you do need to put a little spacer piece in. Which is okay, although again, it can challenge salami fingers. 
Another display option for the model is to fit deck posts. These are metal and they fitted very well on the review model. Plenty are also supplied so you can fit more if you want to. Yet another display option is to extend the width of the deck. And here we go into the micro modeling world where we open out the small brackets. This all works well enough although of course it can be a little bit fiddly. And then we add the spanning timbers between the brackets. That's the features done so let's have a look and see how long the overall trailer is when it's extended. And it's about 2 feet or 60 centimeters. Of course this kind of truck is usually used to transport plants and machinery so let's load it up. And here we're adding a paver and a small roller. And that's all very easy and lightweight for a truck of this size. So what about carrying some big drums instead? And here we have giant cans of tuna steak. Yes, just imagine this truck delivering to your local fish restaurant. This is another impressive low loader model from WSI. And once again it's the limited edition colour scheme that makes it stand out. In addition the standard of detailing is high and the features are good. So if you want an impressive looking heavy haulage model, then this particular truck is easy to highly recommend. <laughs>